Uh, Janan Abdu, thank you again for talking with me about your experience uh, as the wife of a political prisoner inside Israel, Amir Mahul. And I'd like to ask you a few questions about you and your personal story. Um, you must have changed dramatically as a result of Amir's uh, imprisonment. Can you tell me how, what you feel you were like before the arrest in May 2010 and, and uh, how that's transformed your personality? Okay, well, um, actually, uh, yeah, by myself, I'm uh, an activist, political and uh, uh, social activist. I'm uh, a researcher, feminist researcher. So I'm and active in, uh, in uh, different NGOs. So uh, this is the, was the, the, the common part uh, also with Amir. We, we met in different uh, um, organizations and they worked together. But actually, uh, since his jailing, I really say that all my life and my daughter's life, all our life has been changed. Since that day, uh, in the uh, in the private level, we, we we don't have any privacy anymore. It, it was uh, it, it was shocking, uh, even because we get threatening letters and calls from Jewish people that threatened us. Uh, even they sent pictures of Amir, uh, like uh, like in a, a Nazi. And uh, it was uh, it was uh, a new um, uh, experience uh, also for my daughters because my daughters was uh, 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 the 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 that one was in the middle of her final exam uh, in the school and it was so hard period. I mean, not how to keep ourselves not to be uh, uh, not to broke us uh, 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 it, w it wasn't easy and in the emotional level even I uh, uh, I lost my two parents in the same uh, month that Amir was jailed it was a traumatic uh, a traumatic experience and since then, uh, not uh, to not uh, to meet Amir for two uh, weeks, not to know what is happening with him, so, you know, to keep uh, uh, to keep be worried. And uh, we know from the history of the political uh, jailing what what uh, torture the general security services uh, have uh, made. So this is uh, in the immediate uh, level. And uh, since then, all our life changed. We, we really became a part of the family, uh, the big family of political prisoners. So each two weeks, we have a visit. Each two weeks, uh, from one side, we are so happy to meet Amir and uh, um, to meet him and uh, to share with him what's happening with our life. From the, the other side, it's every two weeks to pass the same uh, situation of uh, that uh, the, the jail authorities searching and uh, trying to humiliate the people sometimes. So it's, it's not easy. The continuous uh, experience I mean, every time each two weeks you, you need to pass this thing and it's not easy at all uh, to keep uh, being worried uh, today like an example um, I am a social worker and I used to work with the battered uh, woman and uh, a child uh, uh, abused and uh, and even I work uh, in a shelter where there was uh, an Arab and a Jewish uh, children, and I work as the therapist of both of them because I am specialized of art therapy. Uh, but uh, since Amir was jailing, from one time I couldn't uh, come back uh, to be uh, a therapist anymore, and I needed my energy to myself and to my family. 
uh, and uh, and by myself I uh, I became uh, I, I experienced a trauma uh, and um, in the shelter it wasn't easy to come back uh, to my work because uh, because that uh, the mixed uh, population uh, even uh, the, the manager which she, she's a good friend of me she said to me uh, Janan you are uh, going I mean, to have a lot of uh, problems we already know that uh, some of the Jewish women the battered women that needed help they already announced that they they don't want Janan to be the therapist of their children. So it was in the in the in the immediate level and I decided not to come back to be a therapist. Uh, and uh, then I uh, I worked uh, also half part time in um, Medal Carmel a research center uh, uh, for uh, a research center for Palestinians. So uh, that mean meant directly that I lost a lot of the income of the family, the uh, mere salary, uh, half of my salary, and it, it's not easy until the day uh, I finished uh, my uh, my work at MADA because uh, the project uh, ended, uh, succeeded, but uh, uh, it was limited uh, project. So since then, uh, I'm not in, employed for about uh, five uh, five months uh, and it's so uh, hard because you know I became also uh, uh, I, I don't accept uh, I know that I won't uh, search for a job in uh, Israeli NGO I won't search uh, for a job in, in governmental uh, uh, office I want to search a job in uh, social work in uh, uh, as a therapist, so uh, my uh, my um, opportunity to, to find work actually it's just in uh, the the Palestinian NGOs, and you know the Palestinian NGOs, I mean most of them like how Etijah was that Amir was the director of when you are when you have an uh, so uh, uh, national uh, I, I mean, national uh, ideology, you are uh, you already have a problematic uh, a financial uh, problem. So the, the job is so limited, and this is the I mean, uh, a part of the, the the problems that we are dealing every day. The financial the uh, the, the case of that you are not you don't have your privacy anymore uh, the, and uh, this means that uh, we could be threatened any day we don't know from whom and, and how uh, from uh, a racist uh, Jewish and it happened before yani. So even Yani, even today, uh, when I leave the uh, home, when I need uh, to to take part uh, in a conference, uh, international conference, I need to think a lot about my my daughter because uh, I can't leave them anymore alone. Not because they are not uh, independent, but because uh, I really uh, became afraid of. Uh, the racism that it could be because we are the family of Amir Mahul. So in in the, in, in the daily I mean, life, in each level, we live this. And you know the the most the most uh, uh, hard uh, situation. And it's not I mean, it's not our just our story. It's every Palestinian prisoner's uh, family that uh, um, we don't have the right like other uh, families of other uh, 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 jail prisoners uh, that that they have and i i will explain uh, for for uh, palestinian political prisoners there are a lot of limitations inside the jail that the what we can say a regular 
uh, prisoner, like criminal, like thief, like killer in Israel, they have a privilege. And I will give you uh, an example. Uh, a killer or a thief uh, in Israel uh, have the opportunity and the right to call his family from inside the jail. The political prisoner, the Palestinian political prisoner, haven't this right. So, uh, our meetings are, are not open, which means it's behind a, a glass a bar. And we, 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 we talk by uh, a phone, um, uh, some, uh, uh, so we, Speaker, speaker. We don't have the right to touch each other. Uh, and I try to imagine the first time that I was allowed to meet Amir after uh, the, the two weeks that he was jailed in the security service uh, office. Uh, it was the day that my father died. And uh, I, I, was in, and I was confused because it was so, you know, all is uh, new for me, how to deal, what to say, how I reach the, the prison. So uh, the first meeting, I needed so much yani, to hug him, to, to kiss him, uh, to, to share with him and how I, I will tell him that my father died and I'm going to the uh, Janazi. To the, uh, and uh, it, wa it was behind glasses. And it was so hard for me and for him. My, uh, I told you about my daughter that uh, she was, uh, when he was uh, kidnapped and jailed, she was in the middle of the final exam and she graduated without her father being with her. And the, it was during the, the sentencing, the, the court uh, meeting, and we asked the judge just to allow her to let him see her, uh, her picture and her uh, graduation and maybe to hug or to kiss her father. And the judge said no. So this is the hard, the hard moment that maybe people couldn't understand. Uh, and it is, uh, it is racism. What I'm saying, uh, I'm saying, I mean, what I'm claiming that uh, the, um, the racist wall uh, of Israel, it continues to be inside the jail. Because we as uh, families of political prisoners are not allowed to be in any touch with our uh, uh, beloved. And even they search us, even there is no uh, physical touch, we need yani, to pass a humiliating searching, body searching, uh, uh, even we, we don't touch them. So you can find the, the, the thieves and the killers regularly meet with their family, touch and kiss and hug their family. And even they have the opportunity to, to call them from inside the prison. The, the, what I'm saying, the criminals have the right to work outside the prison after some period. Uh, the political prisoners ha doesn't have this opportunity. And uh, later, you know, uh, since uh, last year, uh, the jail authorities and the Israeli government decided to stop uh, the opportunity of um, learning for political prisoners because uh, they said that uh, the, the Geneva, uh, uh, Geneva uh, we, we, we don't have as a government uh, to give this right. And what I'm saying that Israel respects the international law just when we are talking about punishment and limitations for political prisoners. If the Geneva uh, Declaration saying anything about limitations, so Israel uh, um, respects that. If the Geneva uh, Declaration saying anything good uh, for yani, pol uh, prisoners, Israel say we don't have uh, uh, to respect that. So the situation is, is not easy at all. But you know yani, what keep us 
continuing is uh, the the thought that it also helps me in the in the individual level the thought that if they want you know, their purpose is to broke us is uh, uh, um, the purpose is to keep us you know, uh, not not struggling in our rights uh, they want I, I will not give them this opportunity to succeed. And I said, yeah, they, they pushed us to the limits, to the limits of what uh, uh, an individual person or a collective as Palestinians could, uh, yeah, could uh, uh, take it or um, deal with. But uh, what I am saying, Nora, even, yeah, and this keep me going on, that I keep saying to myself, that I don't have any choices. I cannot go. I cannot uh, I, yani give up. I cannot uh, be frustrated. There is sometimes I am a human. There is sometimes that I feel so bad and I cry and it's it's okay for me because I am a human. And if I don't cry, it is suspicious. Yani. It's, it's uh, some, something wrong. But this keep me stronger because I keep saying to myself I don't have two choices. I have just one choice to struggle, to keep on, to, to take care to myself, to my family, to my uh, husband Amir, which he is my partner in life. We have yani, uh, our good days together and we will continue. We will pass this uh, this uh, hard times, and if the purpose was to keep Amir sil to silent Amir, we won't let them that. We won't let them, as possible as we can, to silence his voice. And because and because of this way of thinking, and keep uh, updating Amir uh, and writing a diary since he was jailed from the first day. I, uh, yani after a, a few days, I uh, I thought about this and started writing a diary to him, uh, uh, sharing with him in the whole level, in the individual, the family, the collective, what is going on outside the jail uh, uh, world. So, and I'm sending him all the time, uh, every uh, week I send him a letter, uh, I sent until now something like 139 letters. Each one is more than uh, uh, 15 uh, pages. And I keep uh, updating Amir, sending articles, sending, uh, yani, to share with him everything. And you know, some <laughs> one day uh, the, the jailer, which she is the, the, chair, I mean, the director of the department that Amir is jailed in. He called me when uh, I went uh, away, uh, uh, away from the jail after our visit. He called me and we said, I want to ask you to, uh, to short, uh, to, to make your letters shorter. I said, why? He said, because it took me a lot of time to read it. So there was a message in his uh, in his uh, world. He he wanted to let me know that he read all my letters, which means that you don't have any privacy with your husband. It's not enough that, that I I can't touch him. It's not enough that I can't speak to him directly, while I know that they are listening to our uh, uh, talk. But they. You know, it was uh, important to them to let me know that you don't have any privacy. And this thing could, you know, could break you as a human, as a, as, a, as a wife. But what I reacted directly, I said, you know, it's your problem. If you have a problem uh, of time or, uh, or effort to read my paper, to read my letter, so ask for uh, for more people to help you. I won't stop sending my uh, long letters. 
but but you know they can I mean, if they want they can sometimes they are doing this that they are saying to Amir there is already a, a letter for you from your wife but it will take time until we read it mm, I see so one way or another one way or another they have the upper hand yeah but it's so important for us as families as really individuals and collective to not to give up and the the most important uh, reaction that I know from Amir that it, it affects the jail authorities is the the continuous and the huge uh, solidarity campaign for Amir from international uh, organizations and friends you know since Amir was jailing yani I started the uh, yani part of it I do it But uh, there was a lot that uh, was done by NGOs, international groups that already know Amir, that Amir is part of, that they were shocked, yani, that they know Amir and they, they said that they were shocked with the, the sentencing and they didn't accept even they, they knew what is the, the bill bargain means, the, the deal. And they said we, we keep respect and respect. Uh, 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 we keep respect Amir and want uh, to be in touch with him and uh, until now a lot a lot of uh, really not just hundreds but maybe thousands of postcards and letters sent to Amir uh, during uh, during the year and in, in, I mean, in special occasions like his uh, birthday like uh, Uh, in uh, Christmas, like in uh, uh, the Nakba day, like in the prisoner day. So uh, Amir said to me, even the jailer and the prisoner, the Palestinian political prisoner, said to Amir, it is a new phenomena. We, we didn't know this before a jail. Yeah, I mean, uh, sometimes the jailer come to Amir while he is holding the yeah, I mean, um, 10 or more uh, cards and letters, and all of them know that this is for Amir. So it's, but it's so important because I know from Amir that the jailer respects him and other, uh, other uh, prisoners, and they keep, you know, they, um, they, they're afraid. They're afraid because they knew that Amir is not alone as a prisoner, And the, the international community are in, uh, yani watching what is going inside the prison. And I think this is the most important, uh, the most important message of us yani to tell uh, the, the, the people, uh, the Palestinians, the Arab and the international uh, uh, community, that it's so important not to help Israel to isolate the prisoners. What is Israel trying to do in all the limitations that I mentioned is to isolate the prisoners and to isolate their families and to treat them as an inner issue that Israel is holding in and Israel uh, deciding when and what uh, to do. And it's so important to let Israel know that the prisoners are not alone. The international community need to take their responsibility uh, for this case, especially for the political prisoners, as they uh, suppose to deal also with the case of the, the right of return, the wall, and uh, the whole issue of, uh, of Palestine. And it's, uh, it's Uh, an important message for an Israel government to tell them that the, uh, the, the Palestinians are not alone and uh, we, we are you know, what we are trying to do uh, is to keep the campaign uh, for Amir and for political prisoners going on all the time well it's clear to me that you're doing an amazing job of keeping the campaign alive and visible and human but also uh, your your depth of knowledge about the issues your your breadth of, of commitment to 
political prisoners in, in general and not just your own husband. So that's why I want to ask you again uh, about yourself because you come off to me as, you know, articulate and knowledgeable and energetic and focused and powerful. Um, were you always that way or do you feel that the experience itself has taught you new skills and new talents or, or helped you to realize certain strengths about yourself that you didn't know you had? Okay, well, uh, Yanni, let's say that I was, a, I am an activist. So actually, all the time, I also as a social worker, uh, I choose to be a social worker because I, I, I believe that I don't agree with the, Yanni, I, I want to help, I, I want to change my community, my uh, I was active in a lot of issues like to condemn uh, killing uh, women uh, in the name of uh, honor. Uh, I was active in these issues all the time. I took part in establishing the first hotline for uh, Arab, uh, um, Arab uh, Palestinian uh, women and uh, uh, for uh, that was uh, rape. So I, I was all the time active. Uh, I took part in establishing uh, a school at Haifa, the alternative school, Hiwar, uh, because I do believe in, uh, in, in these uh, issues. Uh, but uh, since Amir Jelling, uh, uh, I really uh, also, uh, not was, I wasn't shocked, but uh, even uh, uh, I didn't know that I have all these energy, and I think what is mobilizing me and moving, keep moving me all the time, is the feeling of the unfair, the injustice that even the the courts of Israel that supposed to be a court supposed to be, uh, yeah, uh, the main thing is uh, to judge in in, in a good way. I feel the racism. I feel how the state treat us. I feel the continuous Nakba. We are saying, and Amir kept saying that, that the Nakba of 48 wasn't one in, in a lifetime. It is a continuous uh, Nakba. We feel it in every level, in every way, in education, in social, in economical uh, level, in, in the land, in the in the citizen law, everything you feel it. So this feeling of harm, continuous harm, keep me uh, in the in the uh, individual level when I feel it by myself with my family. It it keep me uh, give me uh, more more uh, not even more courage, more uh, efforts, more. Uh, power that even I didn't know that I have it. I really, uh, I, I don't, I didn't thought before that I am able to stand up in this uh, situation. And a lot of people saying that what I, I passed in, in, in one month to lose my two parents and uh, my husband to be jailed for so long time. And to have my daughter in the middle of exams and to be worried that it that she could be failed, uh, it, I took the responsibility from a place of responsibility to my to myself, to my daughters, to my husband also, and uh, the feeling that I will not allow them to break us. I keep going on, and I am optimistic in Yani in my. Um, and usually I am optimistic. Uh, I do believe that we, we will, uh, we will won in the end. And as the, you know, uh, what makes me feeling like that in a collective level is like the apartheid of, of Africa ended. The, the Israeli racism will be in, even if it took a long time. Because, uh, and who could imagine that the apartheid of, uh, of Africa will be full. But the right of people, and uh, if we all keep believing in our right, and it is, 
like that, we will want in the end. Inshallah, inshallah. Uh, this experience, Janan, must have put you in touch with many other Palestinian women whose husbands or sons and brothers are imprisoned. Have you noticed the kind of transformation that you've undergone, discovering talents and skills that you didn't know you had, uh, is common to women who are thrust into these unexpected situations? Well, uh, uh, Yanni. You can say yes in different ways. Yani the intelligence and, the, and you can say that it is there in different ways. When I meet a woman, an old woman, that maybe she even is not educated, uh, educated, <laughs> but she she is a woman that her husband and her family and her uh, uh, um, young uh, um, uh, uh, sons are in the jail, not one or two or three. I keep asking myself, and I saw her that she's coming, and, and I'm not talking about a specific one because it's a phenomena. I'm talking about all these women that keep coming yani, each two weeks to the prison, year after year, after year, after year, and they, they are strong and keep coming and keep the smile in their faces, it is an intelligence. Because I think they, they, they find the way to deal with, with the, uh, the situation to keep themselves going on. I found, I mean, there is a, a woman, there is a lot of uh, uh, women, of prisoners, that they are too young, too young, and their uh, their husbands are jailed for uh, part of them for sentence life, or uh, 20 years, or something like that, and have a children, and keep going, and I am keep asking my, myself, if I'm saying to myself, if they can, I, I can also first. So this is encouraging and uh, empowering. And uh, I think what is keeping them continue is this kind of intelligence. And keep, yani, they find the way how to continue life. Yani, I think that our, uh, our Palestinian people are so courage and are so optimistic and all the tragic, uh, tragedic and all and the, the continuous nakba and the jailing you, you will not find and in the West Bank and Gaza especially you will not find a family that they didn't experience uh, the jail experience and they keep going and we need to ask why. why what is keeping us as uh, uh, people, as a Palestinian, keeping on? And I think this is an, a kind of uh, collective uh, facilities and intellectual and intelligence that we have our uh, sources that we believe that in some day, can, when, when you see a refugee, an old man, keep until today the, the key of the house, even he know that his house already is not there and destroyed. I think it's not the illusion. I think it is the reality and the, 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 the way of thinking that if you have a right, you have no choice. You need to struggle until the end. And in the individual and in the immediate level, this is what keeping me going on. And you know, I, yani, I found Dura that uh, uh, yani, I, I brought my facilities in my work as social worker, as an activist, as a researcher, to the issue of Amir, not just as Amir, but Amir as now, as maybe a symbol or representative uh, of 
political prisoners because he is already well known in the international uh, community because of because of uh, his uh, uh, activism as uh, as Amir as the director of Tijah and so on. So um, I keep yeah, coming to to new levels that I didn't know that I can reach. Yeah, today, like an example, I have already a, a huge group of members and also of organizations that are uh, in solidarity and in activism for Amir and for prisoners. After we started our uh, our campaigning, there is a, a huge, like an umbrella group of um, of uh, uh, people around the world that I didn't. Part of them we already knew before; they have been Amir's friends and uh, partners. But there is a lot of new people that they are already. Uh, I can uh, count them as friends that uh, they are in touch with me and with Amir in several ways, and they ask all the time, please let us know how we can help. So I have already a group of translators, really, that when, when I wrote something or Amir wrote something, I know that it will be translated to English, to Spanish, to, to French, to Italian, uh, to, to German, uh, uh, a lot, a lot of friends that they just want to help, and they ask us all the time, let us know how. So, Yanni, I think my uh, responsibility and uh, uh, what I need to do is uh, to keep those people and organizations committed to our issue. I, and I continue to, uh, to say and keep saying, not as a mere as a person, just but uh, but even uh, for all political prisoners, we already did a campaign uh, during the hunger strike. While we started, me and three uh, uh, members uh, that they are friends of Amir, and uh, it became a 71 organization that they wrote a statement and made an activity in more than 40. Uh, 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 country. So this kind of activism is needed, and uh, it is. The, it, you know, it's nice because when I see this activism and this solidarity, this keep me going on. Also, when I uh, when when I uh, so uh, like an example yesterday, some someone that is uh, a friend uh, in my page. Uh, from Egypt that I didn't know him and he wrote a sentence in uh, um, in his wall and sent it to me that uh, uh, Janan is not just uh, uh, a prisoner a political prisoner was she is a fighter so this kind of uh, yani words give me uh, an energy and keep me going on because I see how much people want to help, yani I was invited uh, in September to Montreal to take part in the Civicos uh, Civicos uh, 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 International Conference, which Amir was part of their secretary, and I was asked to speak on behalf of Amir uh, for uh, ten minutes. And what I'm saying, they they could ask me to send them a statement. But it was so important for them to buy, to, to buy for, me, you know, for me the ticket and uh, the hotel and everything, but and bring me to the conference as Amir's wife and uh, to, to bring Amir's voice. The same have been done now. I, mean, I was invited by the secretary of the World Social Forum to uh, to take part in the the conference uh, at Brazil and uh, to, to bring a statement from Amir. So this kind of thing, and from first, it keeps Amir um, in touch with the international uh, community and in the outside of the, the, break, the prison uh, 
wall and it keeps the outside wall updated and in touch with the prisoners and it brings to the Israeli government a statement again that those prisoners and the Palestinians are not alone and we as international community are committed and taking our part. What a wonderful, wonderful way to to end because it's inspiring and motivational. And thank you so much for sharing uh, Amir's story and also your story uh, and letting other viewers who watch this film, and I hope there will be many, uh, to know that Amir is one of thousands of political prisoners in, in Israeli jails and their uh, experiences and their voices and their rights must be uh, known about and uh, and fought for and we'll all try to do our our part in thank that. you so much nora thank you Jenin. thank for you for offering me this and for your time thank you thank you have a good day you bye too. bye bye bye